I mean, if you, uh, hey guys, hello. I mean, if you realize, but if you realize that it's, uh, that people are in this market just for making like money, it's not really that stupid because meme coins are like basically tools that they use to gamble with. And once you come to terms with that, everything becomes so much easier to understand. To miss a 200% pump this afternoon? What 200% pump? Did something pump that much? I mean, nothing. There's There might be like one coin that pumped. Souls not doing so well, but most coins aren't doing all that well. Maybe some meme coin did really well. I don't know. There might be like a Solana meme coin that's doing really well. I haven't really checked. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure Solana is still suffering from that same problem that it was yesterday. So if you weren't able to get the Solana stuff yesterday, you probably can't get it to... You, it's probably hard for you to get it today. Uh, let me unlock my own wallet to see if I have such coins. If it's a Costco hot dog, that would be awesome. But then I can't sell it either. So probably a little bit... Uh, Definitely experiencing congestion still. Looks like Phantom's even hard to... Ooh, yeah, Costco hot dog's way down. Most of the Solana memes are way, way down. The only thing that is up right now is Thick, I don't even know what that is, and Bad Luck Baby, which I don't really have too much of. But then again, I don't have all the Solana memes. So I can't really... I don't really know which one went up 200%. Hard to say. Are there any remote jobs in the Madison area... I don't know. I haven't really been in the job market for a long time. Most of my friends work for Epic, which is not remote. Um, yeah, it's, it's not remote. But they do pay a lot. Are, is memes are a distraction? Yeah, but like memes kind of start, memes kind of started around there, too. Dude, memes are one of the memes are one of the major components of this bull run. You can try to like you can try to describe you can try to like uh, downplay it all you want, but they they are by far like the biggest. Um, damn, that's a yeah, that's it's a pretty big candle. Now, dog with hat has been around for way longer than last month. And I've had my Floki for I've had my Floki for way more than a month. I mean, these are these are basically just the uh, it's essentially the, the same coin on two different chains. Q and T. I'm still hoping for a thousand dollars, but I'm not really sure that that's going to happen because Q and T has disappointed me. Like throughout, like throughout Q1, the like the, the average like uh, meme thing, the average meme return has been like thirteen hundred percent, spread across all the coins. Because there's been like some huge numerical gains on some of the memes. Uh yeah. I mean, it does. It doesn't look like it has much liquidity. The total liquidity is like one point six seven k, so it's it's really not all that much. I, I it'd be it'd be kind of hard to cash out on this thing. I think it's like, I actually think it's liquidations today. They might be selling it a little again, but I think it's liquidations today. There are a bunch of, there are like, there's a lot of uh, sh longs being liquidated. I think they're trying to buy back for 66K though. I already exited Bat Token. Like I traded Bat Token for like a Polygon and something else. Narrative happening now with Pokemon. I mean, do you think narrative like that? I mean, I think meme coins will shift narratives like many, many times over the course of the bull run. I think like meme coins are going to be prevalent throughout the entire bull run, but like they're going to be different. There's going to be different themes within the meme coins. I don't think that many people are paying attention to the war in Russia anymore. I'm pretty sure like Putin's just huffing and puffing because he's, he's like desperate to keep the West from sending more aid. RNDR. Look, my, if I don't say something, my predictions for these coins don't really change. 
I think RMDR can maybe get to like $30 or so, maybe more. It's already at like nine. And I, I like it already made an all time high earlier. So like 30 to 40 bucks, maybe. I don't know if it can 10x from here. I mean, it is AI, so it's not impossible. But I would be like saying like $40. A cash, I don't like A cash. I'm not really sure. Like I haven't really heard too much from them. Like RNDR is definitely better well known. I exit. I got out of Bat Token and went into other tokens because I didn't really think Bat Token was gonna go anywhere. Um, like I didn't really have like I wasn't too optimistic about Bat in terms of like what it can reach, uh, because I mean I I don't think it was I don't know if it was really meant to reach that high. For the coin itself. Yeah, cloud compute render GPU focused. I mean, R and D. There's there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, AI coins out there. Like that super coin that's forming from the from AGIX Fetch and Ocean is doing like GPU farming as well. Trying to hip into, I see. I mean, right now the liquidity is only leaving Solana because the, the blockchain's kind of crippled at this point. It's not like a lot of the liquidity isn't going to isn't going to base to buy meme coins as well. They're really trying, there are some people that are really trying to get a crypto framework in, legal framework in like right before the October election though. I lost open bat, I already move on to whatever it randomly pumps, what's your largest holdings in your portfolio? It's probably like Cardano ecosystem. It's like the, it's like, it's Cardano and it's ecosystem right now. That's probably my biggest bag. I'm waiting for the bull market to ramp back up. I'm definitely waiting for the bull market to ramp back up. USDM might be depegged, uh, I think, like upwards, though. All these Cardano, like, all, all these, like, Cardano meme coins tend to be depegged upwards for some reason. Oh, no. That's not, uh, that's not the, the sta USDM stablecoin. That's, like, Mountain Protocol. That is not you. That's not actually the USDM. It's like, is this USD Mars? Is that it? It's like 1.01. .01. No, that's not, that's not actually, that's not USDM. I think this is the, I think this is probably it, but it's also not it. I, I don't, I don't know what the M stands for. There's more, like, this is Mountain Protocol. That's not USDM. There's, like, uh, there's, like, several, there's, like, several uh, USDM, uh, ones with USDM. Also, I, I don't think I can find the right one, because I, I don't think that, I don't think this one, I don't think USD Mars is also, is Cardano's thing either. Like USDM, if the Cardano stable coins, when they depeg, they tend to depeg upwards. That's not really that big of a problem. ICX will be about eight bucks a coin. I certainly hope so, because I still have a little bit of ICX left. But I can't really move the ICX from Atomic, because Atomic sucks. I just, I, I'm going to have to have another wallet to like activate the ICX. $3 min swap possible? No, I like I definitely am aiming for like main swap just to be at a dollar. I don't I still don't really know what the progress is on like USDC or like if they have any plans with USDC. All these DEX hunter airdrops going to become available. I mean ICX didn't really do thing do anything in the last bull run.
Yeah, but like with with Cardano, with like ADA, like they if they depeg, it'll always be it, it's usually upwards, which is kind of weird because usually like when meme coins not meme coins, uh, usually when uh, coins depeg, it's downwards. Yeah, you, like ICX hasn't really been marketing very well for like years and years now. What happened to AWT? I mean, it just hasn't done anything. It's probably gone down in price. Like, it's a really small coin, so it's always a risk. I think, like, it can... I mean, the, those coins can always make a comeback. The game is still there. No, Mountain Protocol is not USDM. That's not... Uh, I, I don't think that's, like, the USDM we're talking about. There's like a lot of USDMs. There's also like USD Mars. I don't think this is the I don't think this is the one. It might be. Any of these good AVAX? It could be, I guess. Oh, I guess it is. It's the first permissionless yield bearing stable coin backed by US stable. There's there's a couple of stable coins. Um it's top 30. Now it's yeah, because ICX hasn't really done anything. When did it actually depeg? It has like it doesn't have any volume though. So it's not it's it's barely even out yet. So it kind of it. Him is stands for Mahan. Not sure what that means. There's no, there's act, there's no, there's barely any volume or markets for it. So no one's actually using it. I don't even think Cardano is using it now. It's by, it's backed by US Treasuries, so as long as they can redeem, it should be fine. But, it, I mean, it sucks if you can't, uh, if, if you're doing, like, lending. I've been telling you, man, like Cardano, def, like Cardano just needs USDC. Like, this USDM stuff is not going to work in the long run. You need USDC. I don't really know what's I don't really know what's holding up between Circle and Cardano. Maybe Charles was just trying to put play footsie for too long to establish dominance and it didn't work. But it was kind of a dumb idea to try to do that anyways. So let's actually look at uh, this Ethereum launch. The Ethereum launch is actually called iGenNet. Ethereum launch is actually called Igen uh, Igen Igen Layer. So um, it actually launched uh, Igen Layer and Igen DA launch on Ethereum mainnet. The launch comes after a twelve after twelve billion has already been deposited into the protocol. Igen Layer, a restaking service for Ethereum that has already racked up twelve billion in user deposits, announced today that it is officially launching to the blockchain's mainnet. The launch comes alongside the release of Igen DA, a data availability service from the team behind Igen Layer. So, this Igen Layer has been actually talked about for a long time. So, uh, it was one of the most popular destinations for crypto inflows, a hot ticket partly because of its highly touted innovation of pooled security, a technology that could fundamentally reshape the industry landscape by extending Ethereum security apparatus to other crypto protocols. I don't really know about that. Um, but it has been the restaking service has actually been talking about a lot has been t talked about a lot. So Igen Labs, the development firm behind Igen Lair, announced the launch on Tuesday on Igen Lair's X account. So they made a pretty big announcement. It's out. Igen Lair's pitch is that it lets upstart blockchain protocols borrow Ethereum security, 
allowing users to take Ethereum they've staked with Ethereum, uh, allowing users to take Ethereum they've staked with Ethereum and then restake it with a much larger pool of Ethereum from other users in exchange for extra interest. So I suppose you can stake twice and then you can get extra interest. I'm still not sure how that works. So like they they allow like they allow already staked Ethereum and then they allow and then they allow to restake it on a larger pool for extra interest. Okay. That restaked Ethereum is used to collectively secure auxiliary networks called uh, actively validated services, ADSs, which can be buying anything from blockchain bridges to exchanges or oracles. IGEN DA, the first AVS to launch, is built by IGEN Labs as a way to help other blockchain products store transaction data and other information. It will compete with similar protocols like Celestia, which have quickly become critical pieces of blockchain infrastructure as the industry has expanded. IGEN's initial launch will have restricted feature set for now, and IGEN Labs CEO referred to Protocol's first release as a beta version when in, a conversation with, uh, in a conversation with Coinbase, uh, Coindesk last week. Notably, AVSs outside of IGEN Labs, IGEN DA will be able to register with their protocol, but they will not be able to deploy full yet. So it looks like you can use IGEN Layer to restake already staked coins. I, I still don't quite understand that, but that does look like what it is. You can you can like stake you can restake staked coins. It's called a, it's it's called the it's called an AVS or actively validated services. So this this definitely might be interesting for people that are looking to earn more interest with Ethereum. Kind of weird though. I'm not I'm still not really sure how it works. It might be leverage on top of leverage, uh, but I'm not really sure how that works. But it is kind of it is kind of strange. It just seems like crypto finds new ways to like get more gamblish all the time. All right. The other thing is crypto regulations, which is something that all crypto investors should actually be paying attention to because regs are obviously really important for the entire industry uh, as it goes along. So um, there's two things like there are some bills that are actually in Congress right now. Whether they get passed or not is questionable because Congress isn't really able to do anything right now. And like they try to attack, attack these bills under other bills that won't pass. So lawmakers on both sides of the aisle urged the need for new crypto laws on Tuesday as Deputy Treasury Secretary Wally Adeyemo asked for additional tools to effectively crack down on illicit crypto financing. Hated how they always... Cr uh, bring up illicit financing when, with crypto because that just means like they're looking for more sanctions, which is definitely not what we want. So, so here we go. Bipartisan, bipartisan senators called for a new regulatory framework for crypto industry during a Senate banking committee meeting on Tuesday. Republican Senator Tom Tillis stressed that light regulatory framework is needed to prevent illicit crypto financing and help the industry grow. So I mean, like, they need to kind of reel in the SEC um, if they want the industry to grow. I mean, I suppose, like, for to prevent illicit crypto financing, they do need to go really hard on the KYC AML stuff. But they also need to hold back the SEC from calling everything a security. So Deputy Treasury Secretary Wally Adiemo is asking uh, Congress for increased powers to go after crypto crime. Um... Thom Tillis said uh, Tuesday that crypto industry needs a light regulatory framework to put in place to combat both risks, including another FTX-like collapse and illicit terrorist financing and create a hospital environment which digital, digital assets can thrive. The remarks came during a Senate Banking Committee meeting with Deputy Treasury Secretary Wally Adeyemo on Tuesday, who testified about the Treasury's efforts to counter illicit finance, terrorism, and sanctions invasion. IDMO also pressed the members of the committee for additional tools to fight crypto crime. Following legislative requests he made last November, one thing I tell people in the crypto in crypto or digital asset space that they uh, say, nothing to see here, everything is fine, they're wrong. There needs to be some light regulatory regimen put in place. Otherwise, there are risks. I mean, I wouldn't mind like a light regulatory regimen. I personally think like they just need to, I personally think they're fine if they just hammer down the KYC AML stuff. 
Because, like, if you KYC and AML all the on-ramps and off-ramps, even if people use DEXs, they're going to need to cash out sooner or later. And when they do actually cash out, I mean, like, that's when, like, I mean, you, you got them right there. You can trace based on that. Unless everyone goes P2P, which is probably not going to happen. Or, like, definitely not going to happen. And obviously, like, this guy wants, um, like, Tillis, he's a Republican, so, like, he wants these this framework to be put in place before the election, uh, but um, because like he's at, he's afraid that things will change after the election because he doesn't really know which way it would actually go. So I, for one, would like to look at a po- at the possibility of working with the Treasury Department to address some of the things in your punch list that we agree with, so we may be able to get it down, get regulations on the books in this Congress that will certainly not go as far uh, that certainly will certainly not go as far as some of my colleagues on the other side of the aisle want to go but will be far short of the wild wild west that we have we find ourselves in now the thing is like i think a lot of people in the industry like even just the people that partake in the industry actually like the wild wild west so like everyone's calling like pretty much like everyone is calling for more crypto regulations Uh, but like the degree of like what regulations they want are different. And of course, like Elizabeth Warren's in this as well. And she added, she's like validators. Like she's mentioning that validators, which which validate uh, transactions on proof of stake blockchains are not subject to the same AML and KYC law banks are. But val- that's impossible for validators because validators don't really collect any information. And I don't think they'd be so decentralized if um, they actually collected that information. Stable coins make it easier to convert dollars into crypto and crypto into dollars, so they are an on-ramp into the crypto world. If we're going to create new on-ramps, then we need a regulatory framework that will put rules for AML into place so that we do not have new opportunities for Iran and terrorists and drug lords and human traffickers to make more money. So, I mean, I, I feel like KYC for on-ramps is okay, but validators aren't actually on-ramps. So, like, you can't KYC validators, but KYCing on-ramps, I actually don't mind that as much. I mean, all my on-ramps are already KYC'd anyways, and I don't really have anything to hide. But that's why I think, like, that's why I think, like, all major legit exchanges are going to be KYC'd sooner or later. Because, like, you're seeing, like, KuCoin and MexC trying to get around it right now. And KuCoin's already implemented KYC, and they're still getting sued. I think, like, you're seeing, like, the big fines come up for like crypto exchanges that have like been lacking on KYC, especially after the whole Binance thing. And I don't think other crypto exchanges are going to be so keen on having non-KYC after seeing what's happening to all their contemporaries that don't go like full KYC. So I I personally, I I do actually believe that, um, yeah, I definitely believe that this particular, uh, yeah, I, I definitely believe that like uh, KYC AML is definitely coming to pretty much like all crypto uh, to uh, all the crypto exchanges. And I think like the new framework is going to include that, but they might actually ask like other aspects of regulation to back off. And I'm that's that's actually a trade I'm that's definitely a trade I'm willing to make. Like KYC uh, KYC everything, but like if the other aspects of regulation can back off, I would be okay with making that trade. Because like if you can get Gary Gensler and the SEC to stop harassing crypto in exchange for KYCing everything, I would definitely make that trade. Because I think that's a great, that's a good trade. Wait, so Big E32, how does restaking actually work? I still don't understand that. Like, I I, I don't really see like I don't understand how restaking actually works for Eigen Lair. Like, you take something that's staked, move it to Eigen Lair, and then you restake it. And then you get extra interest. So like you're staking something that's already staked. I, so like, I, are you delegating to two at the same time? I'm not exactly sure how that works. Like, I still don't quite understand how that works, but I I can definitely, I can definitely see like how that would cause problems though. When, uh, when the bull market stops, cause that just, that kind of seems odd. Like restaking something that's already staked. Seems like kind of a, it seems like kind of a, like a trick. It definitely seems like some kind of a trick. I mean, staking is fine. You're just, you're basically just like, you're basically just staking for more interest, but it's like trying to collect interest at two different banks at the same time until the company is transparent and has done security audits and regulations. 
I mean, it depends what you mean by transparent. Like, Coinbase doing KYC, I'm fine with. Like, Kraken doing KYC, I'm fine with as well. I, I Look, I, I think I'm, I'm okay with, like, every, like, all the sanctioned exchanges doing KYC. I'm perfectly fine with all the sanctioned exchanges doing KYC. Because if you're going to... If you're going to want to trade in and out of actual fiat, then they're going to need to do KYC anyways. Like, Mex C, I never really trusted them too much anyways, though. But, like, if they want to survive in this market, they're going to do KYC. You can always go to DEXs. Like, you can always go to DEXs if you, want, if you don't want to do KYC. But, you know, you can't really cash out at DEXs either. So you can make trades that aren't... You can you can make certain trades that aren't KYC, but if you actually want to cash out the money and use it, you have to do KYC. George is pawing around with Sunny Lou of V Chain in Paris, just joking with you. No, I mean like George is interviewing Sunny. George is like gonna do some kind of interview with V Chain. I know that much. Um, it looks like I don't I don't know if V Chain's doing some kind of promotion or something, but like it looks like like they're grabbing hold of some influencers. Look, v Ch like v to change my mind, V Chain has to uh, expand its ecosystem. You, if you got to verify, they should be verified by whatever entity authority. To be fair, I mean most com like most big exchanges are KYC themselves. I mean it's not like Coinbase and Kraken don't like. You, it's not like you don't know who runs Coinbase and Kraken. We all know who runs those companies. Yeah, like he's hanging out with some of the V Chain crowd at the Paris conference. Um, and, uh, he's definitely going to, I know he's going to interview VeChain, but like, I, I want to know what, I also want to know what VeChain's plans for the future are. Uh, cause I'm much more interested. I'm actually a lot more interested in their on-chain development rather than their, I'm definitely much more interested in their on-chain development. Um, than like their their actual business partnerships. Thinking more DeFi, I don't know how it will work. I, I don't think they can. I don't think they can really regulate DeFi. But then you can't really cash out with DeFi. Like DeFi is always going to be a headache for regulators because it's it's going to be really hard. Expect it's going to be really hard to regulate, especially the ones that are truly decentralized. Because it's it like since there's no one really responsible for it, and you can't really take. And if it's decentralized, you can't really take it out. You might be able to take like the web browser front end out. You might be able to take the web browser front end out, but you're not going to be able to do much else. They want KY. Otherwise, they're, anyone audited in the IRS will have too much work to try to figure out where the funds came from. Yeah, but I don't actually think that, I don't think that's actually even possible. I, I don't think they, they can do KYC. I don't think they're ever going to do really KYC for DEXs. Although they'll never ma manage to, uh, they'll never manage to pull it off. I mean, like the, the IRS is eventually, I think the IRS is eventually just going to have to change the rules that like that you get taxed upon cash out for USC, uh, USD. Cause right now the, the way they have the rules for crypto Right now, like the, the way they have the rules written for crypto is like, it's almost similar to forcing people to basically get out of an investment just to pay taxes. It's like, it's basically like taxing unrealized gains unless they're will, unless they are actually willing to accept taxes in crypto, they shouldn't be taxing like crypto to crypto transactions. I'm fine with taxing crypto to cash transactions, but they really shouldn't be able to tax crypto to crypto transactions. Because that's just like taxing unrealized gains. That's why a government issued CBDC is inevitable. But even if they do that, like they can't really KYC DEXs because people aren't going to, like, because people are still going to do trades with the coins, not the CBDC. So, yeah, I, I don't know if, like, I don't really know if they're, I don't know if that kind of plan will ever really come into fruition. And I, and I still think there's like way too much uh, resistance against a CBDC that if there is a CBDC that comes forth, it's going to be years before that happens. They provide you with a government issued wallet. Yeah, but they have to like, 
get people to actually use the government issued wallet, which is a huge step. And like, you know, China's kind of like tried with this whole CBDC thing and even the Chinese government can't do it right. They could KYC private creditors first for yapping about KYC DEXs. Because you still have to get people, you still have to uh, get people to use your KYC wallets. Yeah, you don't you don't get tax on the money you invest. You get tax on the profits you make. You don't pay taxes on your principal. You pay ta- you pay taxes on your profit. Uh, bull run is incoming. Just crap delaying from SEC and excuse to scare investor in exchange of the KYC. I don't really see why investors would be uh, investors should not be scared with KYC at all. It just means you have to it just means you have to pay taxes. I don't think like. I don't think it's the KYC aspect that's really scaring people. It's like them actually like short circuiting the crypto, like short circuiting crypto altogether that uh, that scares people. Uh, like in the U.S., it's also it's also really hard to pass this stuff in the United States. Because like, there's always going to be a lot of resist. There's always going to be a ton of resistance to this stuff. That they will lose their customers and move money to another exchange. Yeah, but like every exchange is eventually going to get KYC'd, and the ones that don't are going to continuously have problems. I think like the exchanges, I think the exchanges that don't KYC eventually are going to be banned from most major jurisdictions and they're not going to be able to keep their business going. Like after the huge fines to Binance and like what they're going to do, like, and the, they're basically using like Binance, KuCoin and these big guys to make an example. After the, after they actually make an example of these ex- after they make an example of these exchanges, I think other pe- other exchanges are going to be less willing. I think other exchanges are going to be like way way less willing to actually to, to actually do non KYC. So eventually, I think that's the most they can do. Though they can just KYC all the on ramps and off ramps. I saw this starting from Binance to KuCoin to Mexi and now others. I don't want to be in the middle of KYC and company and the company is having issues. Like what kind of issues? It, I mean, it's kind of irrelevant whether if the company is having issues, it's kind of irrelevant whether you're KYC or not. Uh, doesn't uh, enjoy those loose regulations while they last. Yeah, but like Milton Bates, I, I think like look, if, if they made if they made tax regulations like if they actually made tax regulations better and easier, I think a lot more people would pay taxes. Like if they just made like tax on cash out, I think they would actually make more money than trying to tax every single like in between transaction. Because it's not that much. Because a, it's not that much different anyways. And B, like you get you get a lot more people more willing to follow your rules if you make the e- rules easier to follow. Because a lot of people just aren't a lot of people just aren't reporting right now because like the stuff is it's really complicated to track all the transactions. And if you don't rep- especially if you're not making millions of dollars, like it's not worth it for the government to go after you if you just don't report. They're having issues. They might mis- uh, mismanage your data and reveal your identity to hackers, scammers. Option trading on crypto is not allowed except for accredited investors. This is how government wants to keep the trading for elite class. I mean, you could say that, but most people lose money on options. Like the vast majority of people lose money on options. Any kind of secondary market is kind of a death trap for most investors. 
I'm actually not, I mean, like, I wouldn't ban options trading, but I'm actually not, like, I basically, like, tell people not to play the secondary market. I, I, I definitely wouldn't, like, I definitely wouldn't tell people to play the secondary market. Like, crypto is volatile enough as it is where you don't actually need leverage to actually make money. Or, and I think, like, most people just don't really know how to handle leverage. Or they just, like, leverage way too much because they only, like, they're like, I can always win. But, you know, like, most people never really win. They just kind of lose. So, like, it, it, like, I would just, like, get, like, but I would be fair, though. I would just get rid of the secondary market overall, like, for everyone. I'd get rid of all the, like, um, I, I would actually get rid of, like, margins, leverage, uh, I would get rid of like um I would get rid of like margin leverage um like you know options all the secondary stuff just I would just I would just make it spot trading for the the market cuz like it's less ways to actually manipulate if you just have spot trading it will be the future is so sh uh, showing now wallets more projects and making wallets worth many features I mean, that's definitely going to be part of the future. Control their emotions to trade in the secondary markets, leverage and all that. Well, I mean, it's it's the type of people that trade the secondary market are mostly just gamblers. It isn't good enough for the government. They want tax on trade into U.S. stablecoin, which is why they'll legally be required to issue a government-backed CBDC. Yeah, but, you know, I just, I basically trade, a lot of people I think just would trade directly into USD. Like if you're using like a lot of people that I suppose a lot of people that are actually using um, DEXs and stuff, a lot of people that are actually using DEXs probably will want um, a stable coin. But I, like for me, I basically just trade directly from crypto into USD. No, Grayscale has, still has BTC. They're they're roughly like fifty percent out, but Grayscale is not completely exiting the market, so they're not like. They're not going to they're not going to trade until they're 100% out. Nothing like a revenge trade to tr wreck you on leverage. I mean, look, le like the secondary market is just a great way for like big like the fat cats to basically screw people on like manipulation. Cuz that's I think that's the main reason the secondary market even exists. Basically for like the big guys to manipulate uh, the, the market guys please hit the likes it's, it basically exists for the big guys to manipulate the markets like for basically for no other reason right now a government charge you if you have uh, in a wallet or vice versa altcoin in a wallet i mean if they know who you are well look, look, look moving money between wallets isn't actually a taxable transaction only if you make a trade is it a taxable transaction I have a feeling the vast majority of people that do crypto taxes essentially just report um, their cash outs. Because like if you're paying if you're paying a lot of taxes on crypto and you're about right, I don't think the IRS is actually going to come after you. It's the people that make million, hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars that don't report at all or report like $5 in profits. Government integrates the and the tax is taken from the CBDC as a gas fee. I could kind of see that, but not everyone's going to use the CBDC though. Like China can't even use the China can't even convince their citizens or force their citizens to use the CBDC. So I doubt the US is going to be able to do the same thing. I'm trying to use Solana for 6 days. I was actually able to do like a transaction uh, over the I was able to do successful transactions over the weekend. So like when I was doing the stream over the weekend, I actually did it I, on Saturday. I did, actually did a transaction. It went through. It took like 20 seconds, but it went through. But I was using, I was using the phantom wallet to actually, I was using a phantom wallet and the swap actually went through. I mean, I can try it again right now to see if it actually works. I just need to buy, I just need to find some like shit coin to actually swap into. It's got to be pretty, I mean, it's pretty busy right now. And all the coins are actually going down because of this, by the way. So let's buy some. Uh,
So I have... Um, What else do I have here? Let's say I want to buy some more Arizona iced tea. I, I actually don't. Liquidity is leaving some hot. Uh, let's just do like 0 0.02 Solana. There hasn't really been too much for VeChain though. Yeah, but like we're talking about what if you um uh, dang, where's Arizona iced tea? Uh let me just go here first. Oh, it's ninety nine cent, okay. Yeah, it is. I'm pretty, like, once Solana stops being congested, I'm pretty sure the liquidity will actually come back. No, there's only Big Mac. I don't see Arizona iced tea. I don't see anything. I just, uh, yeah, I think Chainlink and Polygon are better hold, uh, pretty good holds. Chainlink might be better though. I can't see Arizona Ice Tea anymore. Might be problematic. All right, screw it. Let's just buy more Costco hot dog. Or you know what, let's buy some Costco pizza. Swap. Oh, I'm actually, I'm actually not swapping because I want the coin. I'm actually swapping to see if the transaction goes through. I'm actually seeing if the, if the Solana transaction will go through. I'm not actually swapping because I want Costco pizza. I mean, that wouldn't be a bad idea right now. I'm a little bit hungry, but still. Uh, being sabotaged, but I don't think it's being sabotaged. I think like I think like the arbitrage bots thing was going to happen sooner or later anyways. I think like eventually the arbitrage bot thing was going to happen because like Solana is like so, so cheap to actually transact on. Yeah, it's taking a really long time, way longer than usual. You can see why DXY finally dropping below 99. Well, I mean, we want to see what the Fed, I also want to see what the Fed says tomorrow. Uh, about, like, I think the, inf I think some people are just waiting for the inflation report and like other, like whales actually uh, use the inflation report or using the inflation report fear to actually get people down. Yeah, it's, it's taking a very long time, which means it's probably not going through. Last time it took about 20 seconds. This time it's taking much, much longer. Like, how long does it take until it bounces and doesn't go through? Uh, when you see DXY finally dropping, we need... I mean, DXY needs to be about 92 to 95. But I actually don't think Solana will die because of this. Because, like, Solana's already gone down multiple times in the past. And they've come back pretty strong. But they do, like, I wish they would fix this in less than a week, though. I'm pretty sure, like, it doesn't work right now. I'm pretty sure it doesn't work right now. It still worked for me on, it still worked for me on Saturday. But it, it's not working right now because the network's, like, super congested. Uh, how low did last bull run? I mean, DXY doesn't really fall because of crypto, though. It's really the overall situation in the world. Right now, like, despite all the FUD about the U.S. dollar in the crypto space, people still want the U.S. dollar. Like, you can, you can tell people still want the U.S. dollar because the DXY is so high.
No, the thing is, they don't necessarily need Fire Dancer. If they just implement, like, a fix on the 15th of April, if they just implement a fix on the 15th of April, like, that would actually be fine as long as it worked. Favorite AI coin? Probably, like, RNDR now since the other three are going to combine. Yep, swap failed. Yep, too many, uh, like, it's, it's there's too many transactions on Solana. Like it's the uh, they've they've got to figure out they've they have to figure out a way to kill the arbitrage bots. I don't know how they're gonna kill the arbitrage bots, but they have to figure out a way. No, they don't really need to fix. The, they like I think they just implement like a pre batch fee. I think they'll just impl if they just implement like a pre batch fee of like ten cents, that'll kill most of the stuff. Because if you get, like, the... If you stop the bots from, like, doing that, you kind of get rid of the problem. The thing is, you need, you need a blockchain that actually has a lot of projects. Uh, you actually need a lot of... A blockchain that has a lot of projects that's, like, not... That's, like, not... That's permissionless to actually, like... To actually take over Solana. That's why a lot of them are actually just going to base... No, I, I'm using, like, um, like Phantom uses Jupiter. So, like, even Jupiter is not swapping through on Solana. Bots are part of the adoption. There are plenty of bots. Yeah, but there aren't bots, like, trading every five seconds on Ethereum. Because Ethereum's too expensive for them to do that. I mean, Ethereum is kind of protected by things like arbitrage. Like, like, uh... Ethereum is protected by things like from things like micro arbitrage bots precisely because they're damn expensive. You can't like people can't afford to do like micro transaction like uh, micro arbitrage on Ethereum because it's not worth it. Yeah, the US is by far the best economy to come out of the pandemic. Um, out of the major economies, because, I mean, obviously, like, Russia's in a war, so they're not really, they're not going to be doing well. Um, China is doing way worse. Europe is doing way worse. So, I mean, USD is high, because despite all the FUD, despite all the FUD around USD, people still want the US dollar way more than any other currency. And as long as that's the case, like, the USD is not going, any, like, USD is going to be, like, dominant. Would I hold soul? I'm actually not, you know, the thing is like, I'm actually not really that afraid to hold soul. Given like that it went down so many times in the last cycle and it still came back up pretty strong. I'm not really that afraid of like holding soul. Would I buy more of it right now? No. But I'm not that afraid of holding it. What is the problem with arbitrage bots exactly? They like the micro ones. They make transactions like every two seconds and you have like, if you have a bunch of them playing your chain, it's going to jam the chain because there's too many transactions. Like the vast, uh, the, the vast majority of Solana transactions right now are the, are the bots. I think like pretty much like 95% of those transactions, of the non-validation transactions are pro probably bots, if not more. Like, they can't really do that. They can't really do that on Ethereum because Ethereum costs too much per transaction. See, like... The whole the, the 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 primary premise of Solana was like transactions were going to be cheap and ex and like free, like they wanted to make the, they they wanted to make transactions free completely, and like super fast. That's a great concept until you get hit with DDoS attacks. I mean, they might have a bot issue. They might have a bot issue, but you can't do as many transactions on Ethereum as Solana. Like, they hit a bot... It's just that they hit a bot issue at a much lower TPS.
Will you see another run before after? Because, like, they like they can't really do trades like every five seconds on Ethereum because there's just not enough there's not enough profit on the arbitrage for them to do that. Prices with more transaction like increase the price uh, for a certain amount of time. I don't really know if that would work. I just feel like they should just do a I feel like they should just do like a pre batch fee. And it wouldn't have to be that high. I mean, there's more sand, there's more sandwich attacks on Ethereum, but the problem with Solana is they're just ramming, like the bots are just ramming transactions through. The problem is like, they're just ramming transactions through on Solana. Like any, like every, cha like every chain, once you get liquidity, will have that problem. Like once you get liquidity for any chain, you'll have that problem. Cause like once you get, a, once you get like a big ecosystem in, especially with meme coins and like, and there's like profit to be made from micro, micro arbitrage um, that like the, the profit is better than be, uh, more than the cost. People will actually activate, people will actually attack your chain with those bots to make money, of course. Yeah, but we haven't really seen any chain really succeed though is the thing. Because all these are like, these are more complex smart tra contract transactions. Because like XRP doesn't like have any of this stuff. So they're not really in the, con they're not really in the conversation. No one does anything on Doge. They're not in the conversation. Cardano's not really in the conversation either right now. Like, I don't know about AVAX, how that actually works. I, I, I don't really know, like, what the through output is and, like, if they have any bot problems. Dude, I, I don't really... Uh, yes, an implementation bug is... Uh, an implementation bug, they could say that, whatever. But your implementation bug is basically costing you a week and a half of, like, ohm, of near downtime. It's not quite down, but, like, no one can actually use it, like... The chain's basically dysfunctional for like a week and a half. So it's not like, it's not really a small thing. Think BTC will get to 80K by having? I mean, I don't think the Solana price is going to suffer all that much, honestly. We'll see. I think right now, like, a lot of the stuff's moving to base. Just because base is, at least for right now, is fast and cheap. Like none of the like none of the other ecosystems actually have like none of the other networks actually have the ecosystem right now, but we've actually seen base fees get pretty expensive. Like if there's a ton of transactions, I think base eventually will run into the same problem as well. It's not impossible, but it might be pretty hard to get to eighty k by having. Gas fees were high as Ethereum AVAX gets too much traffic. I mean, you know, yeah, but Big Ether 2, like the fees kind of also discourage bots. So it kind of is a balancing act where Solana fees like remain consistent. So like people, they just completely pile on the, t the, the transactions. Remember, like there's also a difference between like simple transactions and smart contract transactions. I do think base will bottleneck, yes. It depends on the chain. I, I like Ethereum fees definitely go up when they get a lot of traffic. I think AVAX is probably the same way. But even if Base doesn't have a coin, they'll just raise like the, the fees just in Ethereum ESP. So like they'll just like that that'll just go up.
essentially you just right now, like people, they're just looking for a permissionless chain that can handle, that can be that that's cheap. It can handle traffic. It's moving on to the base. They'll just whatever platform. I mean, right now the, the, the base, the base meme coin mania hasn't hit Solana levels yet. I don't know. Like, I think like XRP stablecoin news is kind of a wash. I also, I think Ripple's looking for new markets. They also might be planning to try to use like the stablecoin for cross-border transfers as well. I, I don't really know exactly what's ha going on there. Base fees will go up, but not that high like Ethereum. I mean, I I, th I think it also kind of de depends on how congested uh, base actually gets. We don't really know that part. Yeah, but I don't really know if they can. I don't know if they can find another solution for Ethereum though. That's what I'm kind of doubting. I, I am not sure at all that they can find another solution for Ethereum. Bro, the, the major news networks, they've been more truthful than Brad Garlinghouse's than uh, over the years. I wonder if this bull season won't repeat some of the investors and not sell like last time. I mean, Dave Hooper, like Solana, like for simple transactions during the DDoS, during the DDoS attack, Solana got up to like 100,000 before they started blog, bogging down. Still broken, can't exchange anything on Phantom? No, you can't. It also, like I said, it depends on what kind of transact, it depends on what kind of transactions they are. Like smart contract transactions just are more taxing than regular transactions. Like during the, like last time during the DDoS attack, like Solana really got, got like pretty close to a hundred thousand transactions before their network started bogging down. But this time it's a lot less because they're, they're more complex transactions. Uh, some of these, like a lot of these networks, I feel like can handle a lot of simple transactions. But if the, if you put like, if you do smart contract transactions, they can't handle nearly as many under super spike after the halving. Full last run. I mean, the thing is, everyone tries to guess where when the top is. I'm still thinking it'll like take another year to reach the top. I, I don't know if we're gonna see a super spike. I think like the real bull run doesn't happen until like two or three months after the halving. Yeah, just because they have smart contracts doesn't mean every transaction is a smart contract transaction. Like Solana had trans like smart contracts last time too. But like, if you're DDoS attacking, you're not actually using smart contract transactions. That's why they could get up to almost a hundred thousand transactions per second last time before they slowed down. But this time they're like they're like bogging down at like five six hundred because they're different types of transactions. Yeah, but like Big E32, that's the thing. Like a lot of this stuff isn't po possible on Hedera. That could have to do with the fact that it's permission. But because it's permission, it's probably not going to grow that much. And Hedera did jam up for a day or two because of some unknown bug, uh, like late last year. I, I do remember that. I don't know exactly why. They got it fixed pretty fast, though. LFG is still pumping.
you know, like a DDoS attack doesn't actually, you know, a DDoS attack doesn't actually care at what, what consensus mechanism you use, right? A DDoS attack is just basically ramming a bunch of transactions into your network. It really, uh, it, it really doesn't matter like what kind of tra uh, consensus you use for a DDoS attack. You don't really need a leader to, a, to use a DDoS attack. You essentially just flood the network with transactions. You can flood any network with transactions, regardless if it has a leader or not. Because like a DDoS attack is basically just flooding a network with transactions from a dis like distributed places. It really doesn't matter what kind of consensus you have. No, I'm just saying like what you're saying that, like I'm just saying like what you're saying right now, uh, that D Hedera can't be DDoS, that's complete nonsense. Like any chain can be DDoS. It just costs a lot of money to actually DDoS because it is literally flooding the chain with a bunch of transactions and it doesn't matter what kind of consensus you use uh, when they flood. I don't actually think soul issues are an inside job. I just think the chain does actually have issues. Yeah, if it overwhelms your, look, if it overwhelms your network capacity, yes, it can actually stop the network. Like every network does have a capacity limit. Especially when the transactions get more complex. They essentially fix the DDoS problem on Sol by implementing a small fee. Are we going to see 100K after the halving? Yes, I do believe we'll see 100K after the halving. They essentially fix the problem on Solana with the DDoS attacks by implementing a, like, by, by using a very small fee because then it becomes too expensive to DDoS. But that fee is not enough to like disencourage like arbitrage bots from trading every five seconds. Because like the higher, because like for bots, the higher a fee is, the less transactions they'll do. Because they have to make the transactions worth the fee. I think it's definitely. I don't know about twenty twenty four. If it, if one hundred and fifty k happens, I'm gonna think it's more like twenty twenty five. But if it does reach one hundred and fifty k, should we should definitely think about selling. Wait, how do you know they lied to him? How do you know they lied? I mean, I I think it was a bridge issue, actually. I, I, don't rem I don't think it was because, like, the network, like, passed capacity. I mean, look, I still, I still like Cardano. I still like, um, I still like Cardano. I still like, um, Chainlink. I like, I really like Nier. Now it's like top 20, basically. I would take a look at Aptos just because of Chingari. Um, and RNDR as well. I mean, we don't really talk about ICP much. I still think ICP can get to about $100. I mean, right now, people are looking at the, uh, most of the altcoins and being very disappointed, though.
I do actually think it was a bridge exploit uh, for that for that particular matter. I, I do remember seeing that. Is Wormhole dead? No, Wormhole's not dead. People need to stop thinking that chains and coins are dead just because they haven't moved for a couple of weeks or a couple of months. What platform? I mean, yeah, Solana being down is definitely hurting it. Solana being down is definitely hurting Wormhole. But, you know, I kind of expected Wormhole price to drop anyways, though. I, I kind of expected Wormhole price to drop anyways. It looks bad, but wasn't... Because I, I expect Wormhole to uh, to perform about the same as Jupiter. Like, Wormhole, the terms of, the, like, in terms of structure and, like, how it was airdropped, it's very, very similar to Jupiter. I mean, like, they're, tar they're targeting the 15th for, for a Solana fix. They're definitely targeting the 15th for a Solana fix. So it's going to be about a week. Um, I don't, like, I hope the fix actually fixes things, but, you know. But it does give other chains like base a chance to come up. But I, I do believe any other chain will probably run into the same problem if they get as much activity as uh, Solana does. What platform do I trade on? I use, a, uh, I, I mean, I don't really trade all that much. I basically use swaps. I basically, I do actually think DCA is going to work for people way better than, most people way better than trading. I mean, even if you think you can like basically um, dedicate all your time to watching the charts, I think like long-term buying and long-term holding just does better than trading. By a pretty long shot, actually. You just gotta, you just gotta get out in time. Like once, like if you're DCAing until like a lot of people DCA until fifty or sixty k all throughout the bear market, and they're waiting maybe for like a hundred k to sell. And I definitely think they're gonna get that. You can make. Uh, you can make $200, 200 Yeah, but you can also lose that much in trades. Like, people always, th like, people, for some people, like, for some reason, people think that, like, most traders actually make money. That's not true. Even if you move around large amounts of money, you can still lose money. Now, I mean, right now it's called Crypto Angler because, like, it's just better for branding. Crypto Angler is just way better for branding. Because, like, uh, if people search for crypto news, they're not going to find me. But if they search for crypto angler, they'll find me. We'll take care of all that BS once smart contracts come out. Yeah, we don't even know if, like, Caspa is going... To, I. I we I don't we don't even know like when smart contracts are gonna come out for Caspa and when they're gonna make all that AMM stuff. That's still like way way in the future.
I mean, that might be like, that honestly might be like a year away. Solana being down is allowing FTM to slowly. I don't know if FTM is really drawing the benefits though. I think it's mainly base. Maybe AVAX, but probably mainly base. Dude, I just changed the channel name. I'm not going to change it again. The ALF ecosystem is such a hidden gem. I think, you know, it, it's hard to say that about a chain unless you've really tested it in, in like, production. Because, like, test, uh, test environments aren't the same thing as production environments. <laughs> that not pump yet. It's not a bad idea. It's not, that's not a bad idea. Searching for AI coins that haven't pumped yet. That I mean, that could be extremely profitable. DeFi games, gambling memes, airdrops, mostly the same as a lot of other chains. I still don't, look, I still think like once the Solana issues are solved, there's going to be a lot of people that are coming back to Solana. I mean, there's going to be ones filtering out into base and other chains as well, but I still think there's going to be a lot coming back to Solana once the issues are solved. And like, and like even even before the uh, even before like this outage, other chains were gaining some, other chains were gaining some prominence as well. Yes, I think we'll see an altcoin season like twenty twenty one. I think this time the like the pump might be bigger than twenty twenty one, but still not quite the same as twenty seventeen, because twenty seventeen with like with, with the ICOs was like nuts. Since it's new and not tested, doesn't have much liquidity. I mean, we'll see. Dude, that's what we said after like the seven downtime Solana had in the last bull run. And then what happened after that? You're just kind of saying that because you don't like meme coins. But it's not like Solana didn't come back from being down like seven or eight times last time. Like seven or eight times last bull run. I mean, AVAX is getting some of the benefits. I mean, like Milton Bates, it's partially true that Solana's not hurt as much as the other chains because all their users are, because all of Solana's users are retail. And like Solana is one of those chains that doesn't depend on partnerships to, to pump its price up because no one, Solana doesn't really have any partnerships. I mean, like, Big E32, according to that logic, Ethereum should have died a long time ago. But it's still there. Look, some, some of the liquidity, will, like, once Solana clears up its issues, some of the liquidity will come back. Sure, but, like, FTX exited over a year ago. Like, Solana revived after that. And most of, XT, and most of FTX's sales, most of FTX's sales are actually, like, OTC, so that doesn't even matter.
What do you think about uh, on base? I don't really have any opinions on like a lot of the meme coins on base because you know they're meme coins. There's not, there's honestly not much to them. I mean they they're they're meme coins. They can go up, they can go down. There's there's not. I don't really have that much of an opinion on those things. I I think like I mean some of them will succeed, a lot of them will fail. I don't like. There's just not too much to talk about when it comes to those. It, uh, for meme coins, like, it really depends if you can get it trending or not. If you can get a meme coin trending, it'll probably do well. If you can't get it trending, it probably won't do well. So you're ready to go to 10 in the next week? Depends on the Bitcoin market. I'm very bullish for near. I'm very, very bullish for near, but it depends on the market overall. Yeah, Solana has an ETA on the fix. It's like, it's April 15th. Ramsey's like an old financial advisor type of guy. So, I mean, he's obviously not going to be in the, he's not, he's definitely not going to be in it with like new assets. Not today. I'll go fishing tomorrow. Not today though. It's very nice today, but I've got other things to do uh, after a stream. What do you think about Snack? I mean, Snack, de like, Snack depends on the Cardano network. And right now, Cardano doesn't have the liquidity. And still doesn't have USDC. And USDM is not going anywhere right now. So, yeah. Dude, Flare is basically running on the popularity of the airdrops. I personally think Nier has a lot more potential than Flare does. Yeah, that still inflates the supply, though. I mean, like, you're still diluting the supply, which brings the price of each individual coin down. I mean, people are essentially buying... People are, like, buying flares solely for the airdrops. But there's a limit to that. Well, I mean, the way they do the airdrops, yeah, I think it's like, it goes down each year, but right now it still might be over 100. I, I don't exactly know. They don't all immediately dump it because you can restake the airdrops for more airdrops. So they don't immediately dump it. But once like you get towards the end of the airdrops, yeah, like the coin's going to dump. The coin's definitely going to dump. Once you get towards the end of the airdrops. I mean, they're delegating FLR right now to get more airdrops. Because I don't think that, I don't think there's anyone actually using, I don't, besides the airdrops, I highly doubt, there's not that many people using the network. A BTZ ETS meaning VET and Filecoin? Maybe no, I don't think so. Cause like Hong Kong, look the B like a BTC ETF in Hong Kong, that's it's not gonna boost um VET and Filecoin. Like Chinese I think it's it's a misconception to think that all Chinese people are interested in Chinese coins. They're not. They're interested in coins that'll actually make their money. Yeah, they're like there's like nationalism and patriotism, but it doesn't go that far. People are gonna invest in coins that make them money. 
No, the inflation will stop in 19 months because then like the airdrops basically run out. But at, like before 19 months, there's probably going to be a big dump of flare tokens. But basically everyone's everyone's buying and restaking because of the reward at this point. There's probably going to be I think there's probably going to be a big dump like half a like half a year. Maybe like half a year or so, like before like uh, the airdrops stop, or sometime before the airdrops stop. I do think things will eventually pump post having. They might not pump immediately, but I think like it'll pump post having. No, like like Big E thirty two. Like most people are still keeping the airdrops for now. It's like. It's like, because they can still get more airdrops. Like right now they can still get more airdrops. I think fourth quarter and first quarter next year, we'll see the real run. Ping down is cooling off the meme narrative. What else is there? Uh, AI set. I mean, there's RWA. That's doing pretty well. And like some of the meme stuff is moving to base. Some of the meme coin stuff is definitely moving to base. So it's not all, like, but I do think like a lot of the liquidity is going to come back to Solana. Like once they resolve the issue, because people are still going to want to gamble. Base will quickly saturate the market. Well, I mean, I still think wormhole is going to act exactly like Jupiter. I mean, I mean, depend, like Solana has to come back up, of course, but I think Wormhole is going to act exactly like Jupiter. It's going to go down for about a month and then it's going to come back up because like the structures of Wormhole and Jupiter are incredibly similar and it's still, and it might be some of the same players as well. The base on the, the fee on base should be neg negligible, negligible Un unless it's like really jammed right now. I, I think it's really, it's really cheap right now. I'm pretty sure like with the Jupiter and wormhole thing, you just hold for a month and then you sell once it starts going up. But I wouldn't, I actually wouldn't be buying more Jupiter as of right now, though. Finally buy a soul meme and everyone wants to migrate somewhere else. That's because soul, like, everyone wants to migrate somewhere else because it's down. Like, it doesn't work right now.
Hoens and bull runs usually don't hold for about a week. I mean, it's it'll go up for a long time. But, like, once it hits the top, yeah, like, if the market crashes, it tends to cascade down extremely fast. And that's just how the crypto market, that's just kind of how the crypto market works. I think a lot of the gains from, I actually don't think so, because I feel like people are, like, the people that buy memes tend to just cash out of the memes if they make money. Most of them do. Some of it will roll back into blue chip cryptos, but a lot of it, like, a lot of them I think will just cash out. Why the dump? There's a lot of there's a lot of liquidations. And also like we went up really fast over the last couple of days. I think like the whales are also trying to buy back in before 66k. So like I think there was like I think there was a couple of whales like selling off and playing leverages, so they dumped it quite a bit. But it's like a it's like a two thousand point drop. It's not a huge deal. Yeah, but Grayscale like Genesis ran out to ran out of stuff to dump. Grayscale might have dumped a little bit more, but Grayscale is gonna run out of coin like money to dump at this rate. They're gonna run out of mo coins to dump by like July. But the, I mean, like the crypto pie is expanding, though. Uh, April twentieth is a Bitcoin having. Will you have a? Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna stream on the twentieth as long as it's not a Sunday. It looks like it's a Saturday, so yeah, I'll I'll stream on the twentieth. I don't exactly know when they're going. Like I don't know what the countdown status is, though. Like when is when is the next? Like, when is the next uh, having in terms of Central Standard Time? Uh, let me see. Bitcoin countdown. T Bitcoin countdown timer. Yeah, but the ETF money is just going to stay in Bitcoin. It's nine days, 23 hours, 20 minutes. This one's actually predicting April 19th. I mean, it's basically 10 days. So it'll be like midnight. on. It's, it's going to be like midnight on the 20th. Interesting. It'll be like Saturday midnight. I would say like later this year or early next year. So this one's 10 days, eight hours. Yeah, it'll essentially be Friday night going into Saturday. All right, guys, that's going to be it for today. Like and subscribe, hit the bell notifications button. I will be back later tonight, and I will see you guys later.